Hi. Me, my sister, and my mom have been trying to make sense of this for the past couple of hours, and the facts get less comforting the more we compare our experiences of that night. So last Friday night, I, 17 and male, was home alone. While my whole family, besides my sister who's 21, who was at work at the time, stayed in their cabin a few kilometers away. I'm used to staying home alone, as this exact scenario is very common in the summertime, especially while I'm working and can't really travel to and from the cabin and back. I'm not usually super jumpy or afraid while home alone. I used to get a bit scared by the odd creaks and settling noises of our house, but I didn't get that way anymore. I was especially comforted by the fact my sister's dog was also in the house with me that night. Heck, most of those noises I could simply attribute to him, and if anything were to happen to me, he would act like a guard dog of sorts and alert me to any odd goings-on. At the same time, however, he was one of those dogs who was the type to bark at any noise or person walking past the door or windows, so I was used to hearing him bark or growl at night. Even so, this past Friday, the sound of his barks at nearly 12 a.m. were disconcerting to say the least. Despite my comfort with staying home alone, I'm terrified of the premise of a break-in or some other uninvited human interaction at midnight. I let him bark for a few moments, telling myself it was just someone walking past our glass door in the adjacent alleyway or something, and he would quiet down once they passed by. Needless to say, since you're hearing this, that's not what happened. He kept on barking and growling for a few moments too long. I finally got out of bed. I sleep in the basement, by the way. I walked upstairs to check out what was going on. As I had expected, he was standing wide at alert right next to the glass door. I was comforted for a moment until I walked over, ready to close the curtains and go back to sleep. When I saw the door was open two or three inches, I froze. I had let the dog out earlier that night, but I knew I closed that door. I never left this door open. I'm a paranoid person with bad anxiety, especially concerning break-ins and the like, so I would never, home alone, forget to close the door. I'm 100% certain. At the time, I didn't let myself think about these facts or even acknowledge I could have not left the door open, though because I knew that would send me into a spiral, possibly even a panic attack, if I didn't just explain this away. I closed and locked the door, double-checking it was certainly locked this time. Using the flashlight on my phone, since all the lights were off, I looked around the entire second floor of my three-floor house. I searched the closets, the beds, other reasonable hiding spots just to put my mind at ease, and upon finding nothing, I went back downstairs to my own room. As I was down there trying to push away all the fear, I could hear Bosco walking around on the floor that doubles as my bedroom's roof. I thought I was overthinking it when it started to sound like human footsteps accompanying Bosco's footsteps. He walked around for about 10 minutes before I put my earphones in and talked myself down until I could fall asleep. At 2 a.m. that same night, my sister came home from work. I woke up just a few minutes before this to Bosco down in the basement, which he never does, whining at my bedroom door. When I got up to let him out, my sister walked in. We let him out the front door rather than the glass patio door, letting him in the same way. Me and my sister talked for a while before I went back downstairs, and my sister went to the bathroom. I forgot all about the door incident from earlier, busy with work for the next few days, and forgot to mention it to anyone until tonight. My sister and mom were home with me for a movie night, while my dad and brothers were over at the cabin. I suddenly remembered the door situation when we were picking out horror movies to watch. I was sharing it as a creepy, almost humorous story before my sister spoke up. She said that that night, the same night an hour or so after they got home, they found the door was open again, the same door that I'd locked from the inside, 
and not open since earlier that night. My stomach dropped and I started shaking the second this was revealed. We first started trying to explain it away. Maybe my sister had let Bosco out as well and forgotten to close it until we both recalled we'd used the front door. Then we try to justify a reason someone would break in and not steal anything, then proceed to stay a whole two hours before leaving. Ultimately, I realized it was quite possible I'd locked an intruder in the home with me and forced them to hide upstairs while I searched the second level of our house. This hypothetical person would have been trapped up there, knowing this house was not empty. There was a dog who would bark if they showed themselves again, alerting me to their presence. Then, when I was in the basement and my sister was in the bathroom, they must have ran out the glass door. They had to have timed it perfectly, found a way to open the door once more, much wider than when I'd found it, as though they were in a hurry on the way out. Perhaps they left it open the first time for a quick escape, or to stop the loud sound of it meeting the door frame, and hadn't expected me to close it on them. Either way, it ties together too perfectly for me to reasonably brush it off. I know it's unlikely, especially with nothing missing, but in this small town, there have been many reports of break-ins with nothing missing, vandalizing or just breaking and entering many, many times for no known reason, so it's not as unlikely as it may seem. I can't exactly make sense of this. I'm shaken up thinking of the possibility of someone being in my home while I was asleep and alone in the basement. There's a part of me that doesn't want to believe it, but I can't shake the many coincidences that tie it all together to make this as concerning as it is. I'm just glad my searching came up empty that night, and I didn't have to meet this person face to face. Many, many years ago, before the kids rescue animals, mortgage, and husband, I was a travel writer in Europe. I did most of my trips alone. This story is about the first time I visited Prague. I'd never been to Prague before, and the trip was last minute, so I had very little time to prepare. My travel partner had dumped me in another country, and I was determined to make the best out of this trip by visiting a place I'd never been to before. Upon arrival at the train station, I visited the accommodation office and asked for a hostel not too far from the center. In my early twenties, winging it like this was part of the fun. These days, I'm far less adventurous. The hostel they sent me to was a sprawling, crumbling, slate-gray Art Deco building on a nondescript street about a ten-minute walk from Stair Mesto. The inside was probably beautiful at one time, but by the time I'd checked in, it was full of shabby, mismatched furniture and cheap stained carpets. Most of the light fixtures were broken, so the lobby was very dark and gloomy. There was a faint smell of standing water and must in the air. I found my room, a double for $12 per night, and made note of the fact I had a roommate. She wasn't there, but on her side of the room there was a suitcase, a dress neatly folded across the back of a plastic chair, a scattering of random makeup containers, and a stack of German fashion magazines on the bed. As I had no plans or goals on this impromptu trip, I spent the afternoon exploring the old town square, the Jewish quarter, some various other areas as well. I purchased some Czech crystal for my mom and painted eggs from a street vendor for myself. I also made reservations for a sunset dinner cruise for one. Around 6pm, I returned to my room to shower, change clothes, and unload my purchases. When I left my room about an hour later, there was no indication my roommate had returned at any point during the day. After the cruise, I stopped at a tiny bar and had a glass of wine. I heard some horror stories about the dangers of Prague, but I felt no more trepidation than I did in any other large city. Sure, maybe the cobblestone streets, fog rolling off the gothic architecture, and winding alleys made me think of Dracula or something but in a good way, if you know what I mean. 
It was nearly midnight when I returned to my hostel, so I was very surprised to see my roommate still had not returned yet. I suppose that wasn't too uncommon though. Backpackers can be a very fickle lot. Maybe she'd gone on an overnight trip and left her stuff behind, or hooked up with someone and was holed up at their place for the night, maybe hanging out at another hostel or something. I was surprised but not too concerned. I took another shower before bed. However, upon stepping out, I was surprised to find that things in the room had changed upon my return. Her bed was neatly turned down, the magazines had moved to the nightstand, and the dress was gone. The strangest thing, though, was the addition of a silky pink nightgown spread across the bed, my bed. Maybe she thought she still had the room to herself? I didn't see how, though. My bags, clothes, and toiletries were in plain view. I gently moved the clothes over to her own bed, then settled in for the night as I wrote my journal. I assumed since things had moved around, she must be somewhere nearby, so I expected her to return shortly. After about an hour, though, her side of the room was still empty. I needed to use the restroom before I went to sleep, so I made one last trip down the hall. The building was very quiet this night. There weren't the regular sounds of chatting backpackers, the clinking of glasses, or the music that would normally leak through the walls. There was nothing. I found myself practically tiptoeing back because of the atmosphere. My room was near the end of the hall, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The corridor felt a little darker than before. The few working lights were blinking. It reminded me of a funhouse almost. A tightness began to fill my stomach, and I subconsciously quickened my steps. There wasn't a soul behind me that I could see, yet I kept glancing back over my shoulder, convinced I'd see someone gaining momentum on me. I was flooded with relief as I flung open my door and stepped inside, but that relief didn't last long. Mostly everything was exactly as I left it, except those clothes were now back on my bed. Sleep came in fits and starts. I left the lamp on for a while, still convinced my roommate would be back at any time. The shadows made the room even spookier. I'd finally just about drifted off into a deep sleep when I suddenly heard the door slowly open. A man stood in the darkened doorway. The hall light behind him showed just enough for me to see his contorted face. I didn't mean to, he sobbed. You have to help me. Too confused and disoriented to know what to do, I sat up and rubbed my eyes. I reached for the lamp switch, but once the room light was on, I saw the door was closed. There was no more man, and I heard footsteps moving back down the hallway. I quickly bounded off the bed and went for the door. It was locked. The man couldn't have entered without a key, and the hallway when I checked was empty. I had no idea where he'd gone. I passed the rest of the night fully clothed, sitting up in bed with the lights on. Though I'd paid for two additional nights, by 7am I gathered up my stuff and went down to the reception desk to check out. By the way, I said to the twenty-something receptionist, my roommate never returned. I'm a little bit concerned about her. She picked up the room key, looked at it hard and frowned, then glanced at her computer. What room were you in again? When I repeated it to her, she looked back at her screen. Ma'am, you're not supposed to have a roommate. The room's been empty for three weeks and it's been clean since then. There's only six people staying in the building right now. The hostel has since been renovated and is now a luxury hotel. I realize we didn't physically meet, I guess, but I thought it's relevant to mention that I did meet someone and someone definitely entered and left my room have no idea how they got the key though. This happened years ago, but the thought of it still keeps me up at night. I was walking through the hills of a provincial park with my dog during the winter. The sun set much faster than I expected because of this, and it did so before I could get back to my car. Once the sun was gone and all you could see was darkness, I was walking slowly through a field 
when out of nowhere, I had to this day the most gut-wrenching, undeniable feeling I was being watched. I turned around, and in the distance, I could see a figure standing there, darker than the night sky around us. The instant I saw him, my stomach dropped, and my body literally froze. I just knew right away this man was going to come for me. I grabbed my dog's leash and we booked it. I mean full on sprinting, full speed up and down hills, around trees and down embankments. I was running so fast, it was as if my life depended on it, and to this day I'm sure it did. I made the 30 to 45 minute trip in only 10 minutes and all that stood before me and my car was this switchback you had to go back and forth up if you wanted to reach the top. Once again, I'm giving it all I've got, running it up this switchback as fast as I possibly can. Once I reached the top and looked back down, I saw this person chasing me. Did he go up the switchback like how any sane person would? Of course not. He started sprinting right up the middle of this goddamn thing straight for me. I screamed at him to fuck off, but he didn't say anything, not a single word, just continued to run right at me. I'm so lucky my car was at the top of that hill, because as I ran towards it almost like a horror movie, I dropped my keys. I was fiddling with them trying to open the door. Just in time, I got that door open. I threw my dog inside and shut the door behind me, just as the man reached us. Best part is, there were no other vehicles parked anywhere around us, so where did this person park? Yeah, right next to me of all places. Now, this guy literally jumped into his truck so fast. To this day, I've never seen a better example of speeding out of there like a bat out of hell. He gunned his engine so hard black smoke started blasting out the back as he swerved out of there. He even left skid marks behind him. I sat in the back of my vehicle for hours afterward, shaking and crying, knowing I was this close to whatever he had planned for me. That's why I'm sharing this story, in hopes that people won't just ignore that gut feeling, that little voice in the back of your head telling you to run. If I ignored it that day, I never would have noticed him in time, and I would not have had the head start I needed to escape. Always trust your gut feelings and intuition. It might really be the deciding factor on if this is your final day on Earth or not. I've met a lot of sketchy people over the years. I used to run with a bad crowd, do drugs and the like. But for some reason, this one experience really sticks out to me. There was just something oddly cinematic about the whole thing, I suppose. I'll start by mentioning that I'm a 30-something woman living in a country-ish area in the west coast of the USA. It's a smaller town, but not so small it's completely isolated. It's just that there can be long stretches of land in between some of the homes. One of those stretches has a run-down but pretty swell deli that sells wine and other convenience store stuff. I'd been in there before during the day, and all around the people in there seemed really friendly. I'd never gotten a bad vibe off of any of them, Usually, I'd grab my bag of chips or my deli selection or whatever and leave. The worst complaint I could possibly have was that some of them only spoke partial English. But that didn't really bother me much and it never interfered with their job. That is, until I finally decided to go there at night time. I was having a rough day so I decided to grab a bottle of wine on my way home from work for the weekend. I took the stretch of road leading to that convenience store. I remember thinking that I'd never noticed how creepy it was at night. If it was raining, it would have been right out of the movie Psycho, where Janet Leigh is pulling up to the hotel. Anyway, I get in there, prepared to just grab my wine and get out, but it seemed like the man working at the store had some other ideas. When he heard me walk in, he rushed out from the back, 
and had the most intense and frightening, unwavering stare I'd ever seen. I remember I was so off-put, I tried to physically act nonchalant in response and say something to the tune of, Hi there! I don't remember him blinking a single time during this entire encounter. The whole thing was just so creepy, coupled with how quiet the store was and how dark it was outside. I can't remember exactly what I said after, but nothing I did would break his unblinking gaze. He wouldn't respond to anything I said either. At one point, he asked me if I spoke Spanish. I said no. At that point, I relaxed a bit. Maybe it was just him being uncomfortable at not being able to speak English well. I felt a bit more at ease. I even felt a bit bad for him, actually. I'm sure people can be quite awful to workers who don't speak great English. That calm didn't last long, though. Almost immediately after, he followed up speaking English very well. You are so beautiful. Do you have a boyfriend? This admittedly threw me off a bit, because I'm fairly chubby and was by no means made up at all. He started bombarding me with questions. Where do you live? Do you come by here a lot? When will I see you again? I kept saying the usual, oh, that's nice kind of stuff just to get the fuck out of there. After what seemed like an excruciating amount of time, made worse by this unblinking stare, the transaction was finally completed. I thought I'd made it home free, until I noticed he was following me outside. He'd left the inside of the store completely unattended, staring at me with the same creepy smile the entire time. I fumbled for my keys and tried to start my car to get the fuck out of there. The lighting at the front of the store shining on him against the dark night was like a scene straight out of a horror film. He stood there a couple of feet away from my car, watching me try to get it started. He didn't say a goddamn word. I could feel him staring at me for minutes on end, though. When I finally did back out of that driveway and onto the main road, I watched him in the rearview mirror as he followed me out into the center of the road then stared at me the entire fucking way out until I hit the first curve and he disappeared out of sight. Friendly day crew or no friendly day crew, I never went back there again.